Hey hey, friends and compadres, welcome back. In the first video, I disassembled this plane and showed you in gory detail all the parts and pieces, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And in this video, I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest version of what it took to turn it into a competent user plane. So, sit back, relax, let me know what you think. I cleaned up some of the rust on the iron and whenever dealing with an iron that you don't know the first thing you always check is how flat is the back and I'm very hopeful somebody knew what they were doing and took time to flatten the back and I still don't see a logo and it's wearing on the edge and the edge so it looks like it's spoon shaped we're looking at the hollow so I do see a little bit of shine up here so hopefully it's not as bad as I fear I almost have a shine the whole way across. And we're smooth all the way across, so that worked out okay. It's actually not that bad. A little bit of pitting in the middle here too. Almost got all the pitting out. I could probably get this whole area pretty flat without a huge amount of work. Well, it only took about five minutes. I'm pretty smooth back here, pretty happy with it. I had called this pitting before, but I don't think it's pitting. I think it's just the discoloration because I don't feel it at all. So now we can take a closer look at the primary bevel. Just going to try to freehand this. I think I can feel a good defined bevel. Pretty square. That's a good thing. Okay, that feels pretty sharp. I'm going to move to the higher grit. Every time I use my water stones, I flatten them with the diamond plates. You can see this gray slurry, a little bit of the steel being worn away as I'm polishing this edge. When I did the back, I used the uh, Charlesworth ruler trick, and I saw online recently that that gentleman just recently passed away. Kind of a sad thing, but his idea is you put a ruler over on this side of the stone and rub it. Where the stone is so small, as I'm rubbing it back and forth, I just ever so slightly lift it not even a degree and when it's stuck to the stone there's a lot of friction because it's such a flat fit and if you just lift it a little bit you can feel it release and when you do there's a tiny shiny line right up on the very edge so i have all the parts cleaned up i start with the least aggressive abrasive to look at the frog first it's actually pretty flat not perfect, but uh, very light sanding, pretty much shined the whole area, so that's good news. I did notice that this hole is drilled off center, and that kind of corresponds to a little bit of a ridge on this tab. In fact, it looks like it's already been ground a little bit. So, cleaned up and with a sharp iron, I figured it was time to take it for a test drive. And when I got the thing cutting, it cut really well. Gave me a good finish, and the shavings were pretty good. However, the plane itself was a little squirrely. And two things. First of all, the iron tended to cut an awful lot on the left side, uh, despite my attempts to balance it using the lateral adjustment lever. And secondly, any time I move the iron, either up or down or laterally, it almost seemed to have a mind of its own. So uh, after taking my test drive, I figured it was time to take it apart, take a closer look at some of the inner workings, and uh, probably bring it to the next step of tune-up. So like I showed on the videos, on this Miller's Falls hand plane. Technique I'm going to use to take up slop between the pin and the hole in the yoke. Take a piece of aluminum, and this is from a serving tray, and you wrap it around the pin, form sort of a bushing, and when you slide that in, it's a much tighter fit. It can be a little bit tricky, but I did it before. And there's the yoke with the aluminum spacer in there. So just to give you an idea, this is backed out, and look at how many times I have to turn this before it starts to push the iron back down. Now it is. If I didn't have that aluminum bushing in there, that would be even worse. I just ran it over the uh, sandpaper on a plate. In a couple spots I'm not hitting at all, but most of them are being scoured at least a little bit. Low spot or a rib kind of running down the middle, and on either side of it, I can actually feel that with my finger. 
which is not a good sign and around the mouth it's not so great in front of the mouth I mean that's probably the most critical is right in front of the mouth and that's not looking so hot either I'll give this a shot till I run out of patience well it took me about a half hour seven sheet 100 grit sandpaper but I think it's by and large very flat front of the mouth still has a little bit of a dip right in front of it and here is some of the sanding dust that came off the sole of the plane. One thing I've learned from having done this several times is a sheet of sandpaper only lasts a few minutes, maybe 10 or 20 strokes across every section of the sandpaper. After that, you're really just wasting time. It sounds like it's sanding and removing material, but it really isn't. And the sandpaper is still good for softer things. I keep them around for sanding wood and stuff. So the sole is flattened and lightly waxed. My hands are still filthy. Very nice. I think I finally have the blade flat and sitting where I want it. And that's a very nice shaving. And there's the kind of shavings that you like to be able to get if you want them. I took some time to polish the edge at the front of the chip breaker and make sure that the lever cap was flat. They both look to be okay. I had to open the mouth of the plane up back to where it kind of started originally. It kept cutting deeper on the right side of the blade and when I put a square on it ever so slightly longer on the right. The other thing I'm noticing is I got little bits of brass down here so I think I'm going to take this all apart again and polish the edges of this yoke. So I put a couple of washers on either side of the yoke. They're actually split lock washers because they were a better geometry. And I still have the aluminum bushing around the pin. I also sanded the inside of these two round ears on the yoke to smooth them out. One of them was rounded. I think they were both stamped in the same direction. So one of them was rounded on the inside and the other one was burred on the inside. The real slop comes from up here. I mean, look at how much movement there is. That's three or four turns of the screw just to go from the top of the slot to the bottom. wonder if anybody has any clever ideas on how to close this mouth up. I put this clip in the opening here in the chip breaker to help take up some of that slack. Unfortunately, it just doesn't sit right. Oh well, it was worth a shot. It's not very flat, not very square. No big surprise there. I like to try to get the right cheek to be square, just in case you ever want to use it in shooting board. So here's the right side. It cleaned up pretty well. Just going to spot sand it to even out the patina, or lack thereof. And on the left side, I just cleaned it up a little bit. I'm going to spot sand this again, just to even it out. It's hard to tell by looking at that if these edges were sanded. I'm just going to leave them dark. So this probably only took about 10 minutes. Again, that was just sanded, spot sanding mostly. You can still see a little bit of the graying, which is fine. And on this side, looking good. And I also touched up the bottom with 220, just hitting a couple of the spots, polish it up a little bit. The frog adjustment screw was off center. And you can see there's a shoulder showing here on the tab and not on this side. The tab actually is ground at an angle. And if you look at it carefully, you'll see that the U, or the slot, isn't symmetric. It's kicked off to the right as I'm showing it. I originally had this mounted backwards. I think that was causing problems with the frog. To check the frog seating, I took this piece of aluminum foil, which is one one thousandth of an inch thick, and I put it underneath each of the four tabs, pressed the frog down with my fingers, and tried to lift the aluminum foil out. And I discovered that it was hitting on these three points, and it wasn't hitting over here. I took the time to sand this surface, this surface, the surface under the frog here, till I got it to the point that I'm getting a decent friction on all four points. Well, I'm pleased to say this thing is planing like a champ at the moment. I don't have the toad on it, so I'm holding it a little funny. But there it is, just barely engaging. And I'm going to scoosh the blade down. And there's that shaving. I mean, this is not the most difficult wood in the world to plane, but that's still pretty good for a uh, second tier plane.
Well, I've taken this guy for a test drive, planing down these little blocks of wood. Just take a, a hair off the face here. And I'm happy to say that this great neck is working just as well than the Vaughn and Bushnell and my Defiance number four hand planes. So this may be a no-name plane, but working like a champ. Well, I just had five of these blocks that I had to plane, and I used my trusty new Sergeant tuned up plane. And I'm pleased to say it worked quite well. I had to remove about a millimeter off of this face from five blocks. And with a piece of wood this size, to cut something like that on your table saw I think is a tricky if not dangerous cut. And if I had a thickness planer, which I don't, I think you'd have to build a sled for it or something. But, you know, you just put it in the vise and you plane it. And like I say, this performed very well and the blade stayed sharp enough to remove a millimeter or so from five of these blocks. And you can get an idea what kind of shavings I have here. So it was probably a good 10 minutes of hand planing and it held together quite well. So I think this is certainly a competent plane. Well, thanks for sticking with me and seeing all the fun I had turning this thing into a sweet user. In the next video, I'll show you what I did with the knob and the tote and the depth adjustment knob to make this thing look as good as it works. Don't forget to like and subscribe, leave a comment, you know I love to read them. So, until next time, stay out of the hot sun.